Hi everybody, I'm going to show you how to take what would have been a poster and transform it into a PowerPoint presentation and or movie. So this is a poster that I put together for the ISPRM that I would have presented and I actually did prepare it with a video just in case. And what you'll see on the next slide behind me, there's a QR code and you can actually put your camera up to the QR code on the slide after it's larger and it will prompt you to open a YouTube video. And that YouTube video is my poster without my voice, but animated for anyone to take home. And I think it's a great idea for the future, but for the meantime, I'm going to show you how to make a presentation and I'm going to use my voice. Uh, this version of PowerPoint also has my face. Uh, if you don't feel comfortable showing your face, you can turn off that feature as well and just have your voice or just do it the way this poster was done on YouTube without any narration, just the slides. You can watch that version with your phone. All right. So this QR code would actually, if you just put your phone right up to it and focus on the code, it will take you to a website on uh, that on YouTube where you can watch this presentation without having to see me speak or see my face. Um, I made the QR code by taking my poster, turning it into a JPEG and putting it on my internet site, which is actually just my Google Docs. Uh, and it, that Google Docs gives you a website to share. Then you take that URL code and you put it in a QR code generating program, which is free. It's actually a lot easier than it sounds. It takes about two minutes and that creates a QR code, which you can put on the poster and any future presentations, you can either put a copy of your poster or a presentation. Again, if you don't want to have to listen to me speak, you can see this presentation through the QR code without any narration. My name is Dr. Paul Winston from Victoria, British Columbia. I would like to present my poster to you. This is a novel approach to spasticity uh, in a quadriplegic patient that had already gone a axillary to uh, triceps nerve transfer to give them elbow extension. Unfortunately, he had severe global uh, spasticity, which made it hard to use his newfound function. In particular, his shoulder adduction movement was so strong, it was hard to move his elbows apart so he could go into extension. So I performed a uh, lateral pectoral nerve diagnostic nerve block using ultrasound and e-stim and paralyzed his uh, pectoral nerves. My anesthesiologist then repeats the nerve block to ensure correct localization prior to procedure. He is able to reduce him such that the arm will actually abduct overhead. And of course, this is done bilaterally. Again, not demonstrated here, but he is able to abduct him over 90 degrees in this picture. We felt he was a good candidate for our novel cryoneurotomy percutaneous procedure. This is a percutaneous cryoprobe, which goes through a 16 gauge catheter into the skin. Nine days post procedure, you can see that I am able to abduct both arms over his head. There is still resistance, but for his caregiver, it is a dramatic improvement. He is uh, feeling much looser in the uh, shoulders. He is able to use his tricep extension, which has been a very successful nerve transfer by our peripheral nerve surgeon, Dr. Emily Krauss. He is demonstrating here how he can do it. Uh, on two occasions. And then what is nice is he used to get his elbow stuck on his armrests, but now you can see after the cryo, he is able to externally rotate on his own. He doesn't have the power to abduct. He was already on high dose baclofen and 600 uh, units of botulinum toxin. We can redistribute the uh, botulinum toxin from the pec muscles to other areas, but this made us realize we can do more for him. Our physical examination noted that because of his weakness, he is not able to open his hands, but we noticed a lot of tone in the interossei in the ulnar intrinsic muscles. We therefore performed a uh, diagnostic lidocaine nerve block at Guillain's canal to paralyze the uh, ulnar innervated muscles. And you can see on the right, he was able to open his hand better. We used a uh, inexpensive TENS machine on the extensor muscles to help him facilitate uh, extension. This is not true FES. Uh, as it did show improved function, our next step is decide whether we have a surgical, uh, either intrinsic release or neurectomy to help him. 
In summary, our Victoria approach to spasticity is to identify the key muscles which cause spasticity. We will begin with conservative measures, including bracing, uh, physical therapies, botulinum toxin. We use diagnostic nerve blocks to knock out the most important spastic muscles. We are using uh, nerve transfers when possible to restore hand and nerve function. Uh, neurectomy or targeted uh, cryoneurotomy uh, is a good option for muscles that reduce well with nerve blocks that are not contracted. All patients require intensive therapy. We believe that spasticity is a team sport. So now that you have um, made your PowerPoint template, you are going to want to record it. Now every version of PowerPoint or all the other different uh, slide presentations will be different, but you can make a video, you can either have your face in it or not, you can just have words and no narration. You basically will then go to your record slideshow feature, which should be in whatever version you have, there should be a choice. And I usually do record slideshow. I'll show you what that looks like in a moment. Um, many times you'll want to re redo the slide and it gives you the option to clear recording or narration or just the timing from each slide. Uh, and the timing is when you don't want to speak. You can still leave enough time on each slide for people to read it at the speed that you want. You can clear the recording from each slide or start all the way over. You are going to save your presentation in that form. And then after you save, save it as a new file, as a movie, a WMV or MPEG-4 is the option. And I'll show you what that looks like. So I just bought a new computer. So this is what it looks like on the newest version of PowerPoint. On my older computer, it looked different. But you can see there is a record slideshow from the current slide or from the beginning. And it will take you into a forum where you can make a, a slide. And you do it slide by slide. What I usually do is do the slide, hit stop. So that's finished. And then I go to my next slide, think about what I'm going to say, and do it again. And after I've saved it, I will go in and save it as a movie. If you do the WMV form, which only, I think it's only on some of the older ones, uh, the new ones have MPEG-4, it, it turns it into a very, very large file. You can still, we'll figure out a way for you to transfer those to us as large format, but um, I usually condense them with another video converter if you want to, that's not necessary. So uh, you can also just send it to us as the PowerPoint and the uh, CAPMNR will do the conversion for you to make it standardized. Thanks everyone. And lastly, for anyone who wants to drop a QR code in their posters for the future, as you know, people rush by your posters often don't have enough time, say, hey, just take a picture of my um, QR code. It will take you to the YouTube uh, site and you can save that for later. So folks, I just want to make a huge shout out to Mike Morrison, whose uh, video presentations on YouTube on better posters are incredible. Uh, he suggested we create a new hashtag for ourselves, so I'm suggesting hashtag new CAPMR. If you put that on any Twitter or any other um, platforms you use, everyone just has to click on that hashtag and see all the other posters that are submitted. So I think this is a wonderful idea. Thank you, Mike Morrison. Thanks again for listening and thank you for working with all of us in the new world with the uh, quite um, scary times that we're living in. We know that some of our members are dealing frontline, a lot of our residents are frontline um, COVID doctors. Some of our rehab physicians are managing acute care hospitals with COVID. So uh, we're thinking of all of you and we're trying to do our best to be there for you.